Hello and welcome to this week's Saturday session with Amy for Junior Cycle Home Economics. This is the third part in the special diet series. Today we'll be looking at vegetarian and vegan diets, followed by eating disorders, followed by food allergies and intolerances. Make sure to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and of course, our exam revision YouTube channel. So today's plan, we're going to be looking at our vegetarian and vegan diets first, followed by exam questions. We're then going to look at eating disorders, followed by food allergies and intolerances. All of the PowerPoints used today can be found on the exam revision website under Junior Cycle Home Economics. So special diets, vegetarians, lacto-vegetarians and vegans. So our learning intentions for this chapter include defining veganism, defining lacto-vegetarianism, explaining why people choose vegetarianism, listing food suitable for vegan diets, outlining considerations when planning vegetarian meals and creating a vegan breakfast. And then finally, listing foods which are suitable for lacto-vegetarian diets. So first of all, I always get my students to think about what they know about the topic before they start studying. And then at the end of the topic, I get them to go back again in a different colored pen and write it down. So I'll give you a minute to think about what you know about this chapter. So vegetarian diet, if we have a look up there at the picture, we'll be able to see an example of vegetarian dishes. So there are two main types of vegetarian there are vegans, also known as strict vegetarians, and do, they do not eat any animal products at all. So this includes your meat, so any type of meat, whether it's chicken, um, whether it is mince, beef. They also don't eat fish, they don't eat dairy, so milk, cheese, yogurts, and they don't eat eggs. So their diet is composed or made up of entirely of plant foods. So these include fruit, vegetables, cereals and nuts. And it's important to be able to distinguish or tell the difference between vegetarianism and veganism. Our lacto-vegetarians do not eat meat, fish or poultry. However, they do eat some animal products, so dairy and eggs. So you need to know the difference between lacto-vegetarians. So lacto coming from the word lactose, which is the milk, the sugar found in milk. So that's how I get students to remember it. So lactose. So they do eat dairy and eggs. So why do people choose a vegetarian diet? So the first reason would be for ethical reasons. So many vegetarians believe that the killing of animals for food is morally wrong. Um and they object to the practices used in the rearing of animals for food. So for example, people won't eat caged hens or your battery hens. Um, it is becoming more popular vegetarianism, um, especially with global warming, um, means that we are going in, our food security is no longer um, as secure as it was. So it means that there are a lot more um, people who are struggling to find food and people in um, first world countries are trying to do their part to help people in other countries who can't access food. So there is a lot less, um, a lot better for the environment by eating a vegetarian or vegan diet. So by eating the likes of meat and um, the practices used in rearing, for example, the cattle producing methane, your CH4, um, is released from the cows. Um, there's also a lot of water and extra food given to them. And then the processes of getting the meat ready and packed and sell to the shops. There's a lot of um, natural resources being used that aren't being used when you're just 
eating um, as a vegetarian or a vegan. So second reason is health. So vegetarian diets are a lot lower in fat. So they contain in most quantities unsaturated fat which is good for you so you should link, link back to the fat chapter and fat is a macronutrient so proteins fats and carbohydrates are all uh, required in higher amounts so they are our macronutrients um vegetarian diets and vegan diets are higher in fiber so fiber is found in the likes of your wholemeal cereals wholemeal bread wholemeal pasta it's found in nuts and seeds the skins of fruit and veg it also helps to reduce the risk of heart disease because you're eating less saturated fats, which are found extensively in your red meat, like your steak. It reduces uh, the likelihood of obesity because you're eating more natural pros more natural foods that are um, generally less processed and also reduces the occurrence of bowel problems because if it's higher in fiber, it's going to reduce the likelihood of constipation. So some people are concerned as well about antibiotics and hormones which are given to livestock, which then when we eat, for example, if a cow was sick and they give them antibiotics and then we eat it, we're then going to, um, our bodies are going to absorb in those antibiotics without knowing. And then that can eventually in some cases lead to antibiotic resistance, which means then if you need antibiotics, you're going to be resistant to them and you're going to get very sick. Um, but it's not something that occurs too often. And um, next reason is religious reading. So vegetarianism is very common in uh, religions such as Buddhism. For environmental reasons, so there's less environmentally demanding to grow fruit, vegetables and cereals than rearing your cattle and your sheep and your turkeys and your chickens preference so some people just don't like meat they don't like the taste the smell or look of it i would regularly see students who do not like to touch raw meat um, and sometimes that in would put them off altogether just cooking it so some people just do not like it's a sensory thing so there are five reasons why a person would choose a vegetarian or vegan or lacto vegetarian diet so you need to be able to state them so the words which are highlighted in bold and then you need to be able to explain them and give an example for full marks otherwise you're not going to get the top mark so state explain and give an example so which foods are suitable for a vegan diet because veganism is becoming more popular, there are a lot more vegan shops and cafes popping up and even in most of your shops, even small little centres, they would have foods which are suitable for vegans, um, for vegetarians and lacto-vegetarians. So you're going to see these foods a lot more in shops and oils specially dedicated for this type of special diet. So vegans... They need protein because they are not eating meat. They need to get it substituted from another source. Vegans can um, become deficient, which means they are lacking. They don't have enough of vitamin B12. So B12 is a micronutrient, so your vitamins and minerals, and B12. So it will cause the likes of pernicious anemia and fatigue. And B12 is only found in meat. So they're going to have to substitute it with um, the likes of um, a B12 supplement, which are easily found in most um, food shops and health shops and pharmacies. So protein foods suitable for a vegan diet. Um, and even vegetarian diets and lacto vegetarians. So you have your beans, your nuts, your lentils, your tofu, uh, which is made from the curds of soya milk. You have your TVP, which is your textured vegetable protein. You have corn and you have your soya beans. Carbohydrate foods is pretty much the same as for any diet. So we have breads, breakfast cereals, pasta, potatoes, vegetables, quinoa and rice. High fat foods with our vegetable oils and margarine or avocados and nuts. So while some of them do have saturated fats like your avocados, they are actually better source, better for the body than your saturated fats that would be coming from the meat. So the body is able to break it down and use it more efficiently. 
our vitamins and minerals so we have our vegetables any type of vegetable any fruits nuts fortified breakfast cereal so this means it has added vitamins into it usually the likes of vitamin b and vitamin d and as i was saying earlier on vegans tend to be deficient in b12 because this is only found in animal products um, a lot of the Irish population will be deficient in vitamin D due to where we are in the latitude. Um, so we would have to either consume more foods high in vitamin D, so fortified foods, or you have your sunflower oil, your, um, you also have um, sunflower seeds, you have oily fish of which vegans can't eat. So therefore they're going to have to substitute it with, for example, um, your vitamin D tablets. So children need five microgram, 10 micrograms and adults is five micrograms and then adolescents is 15 micrograms because they are growing. So that's per day is their RDA, so recommended daily allowance. And again, all of this can be found under strand one in the home economics section in exam revision and it's under the micronutrients in vitamins and minerals. So guidelines, so these are like tips and things we have to think of when we are planning a vegetarian and vegan diet. Chances are you're going to come across either yourself will be vegetarian or vegan or you're going to have a friend or a family member and you're going to have to be able to plan a diet for them. It also comes up under CBA2 and it is also linked to the culinary food skills exam which is done in, in third year which is worth 50% of your overall grade. So vegans must make sure to eat plenty of plant-based protein sources. So you're going to think of the likes of peas, beans, nuts, and meat alternatives, such as your soy products, for example, textured vegetable protein, and your mycoprotein foods. So these are the likes of your corn. So you cannot put chicken on the menu. You need to think of alternative foods. You may come across a pescatarian, which is a vegetarian that does eat fish products. Vegans need to eat foods which are fortified with vitamin B12, as I said in the last slide. So this would be found in the likes of your textured vegetable proteins and your breakfast cereals and your fortified milks. Or you can indeed take a vitamin B12 supplement to avoid deficiency. Vegetarians and vegans, so they need lots of plant foods that are high in iron because um, the iron that would be... Uh, present in vegetables is your non-heme iron and um, humans do need heme iron which is the stronger source okay that is easier for them to break down and you get more amounts of iron so therefore they are going to have to consume more foods that are higher in iron so for example like the beans and leafy green vegetables um, and your fortified products so your breakfast cereals and milk now, because they can become easily deficient in iron, so deficient in iron means that you can become anemic, which means that there isn't enough red uh, oxygen uh, binding to your red blood cells, okay, to your hemoglobin, which, so then you aren't getting enough oxygen being circulated around the body. Um, and when you get anemic, you get extremely tired and you're going to look very pale and sick. And um, it's means that you haven't got enough oxygen going around the blood which is never ever good and um, so they can become deficient in iron very easily especially um young girls and teenage girls due to menstruation so they have to be extra careful of it uh, so vegetarians and vegans should eat plenty of foods which are high in vitamin c so this is the likes of fruit okay because iron and vitamin C have an interrelationship. So that means when iron and vitamin C are being consumed or taken in by the body together, they are going to be absorbed in better quantities. If you are having um, foods such as high caffeinated foods like coffee and you're taking that with, um, for example, an iron supplement, you may as well not be taking it because it's not going to absorb it as easily. So if you are deficient in iron, you're anemic and you are, uh, have to take for example an iron supplement you should be consuming it with vitamin c and um, because they do have their interrelationship 
So you're looking out for the V label. So this is telling you that it is suitable for vegetarians. And because vegetarianism and veganism is becoming more of a popular diet, you will see that label extensively throughout shops like Tesco, Aldi, Lidl and Dunn's. Specifically, um, you will see it a lot in Tesco. Whereas maybe five years ago, you wouldn't. You'd have to go looking at it. So this chapter also links in with your food labels chapter. So it is very likely that you will be asked to either create a menu or a meal for a vegan, a vegetarian, a lacto-vegetarian or a pescatarian. Now, this could be an exam question. OK, so it could be an exam scenario or it could be in CBA2, which then is directly linked with the co co culinary skills exam so you are going to have to know to, to do this you should refer back to the meal planning uh, guidelines chapter which is usually under strand one in the book and all of this can be found on our website so here is a sample vegan breakfast so as a um, examiner of this year's junior cycle exams um you must include either stars between your main courses or you're going to include dashes or a line you need to be able to tell the examiner that there is a difference between the two courses now we know that when you're writing the questions you are very much aware that there are different courses but you need to actually put everything that's in your brain at that particular moment onto the exam paper this year they would have included orange juice as an actual course um, you would have got full marks for putting orange juice. They then would have allowed um, three marks for stars. If you didn't have that, then they would have considered that um, it wasn't two courses. Again, you had to put the courses so that they were in order. So you wouldn't have your porridge before your orange juice. You'd have your orange juice beforehand, followed by your porridge. So it needs to be in sequence. And if you had it in sequence along with the stars, you get three out of three. We then have porridge with berries and bananas served with almond milk. Now, if you just said porridge, you would not get full marks. If you said porridge with berries and bananas, you still wouldn't get full marks. Now you get more marks than just porridge. But if you said porridge with berries and bananas served with almond milk, you would get full marks because you need to be exactly specific thinking when you are eating out in a restaurant or a cafe. Now, um, orange juice is a tick for vegan breakfast. Porridge, tick, berries and bananas, tick and almond milk. So you could not have put your if you had to put milk, you would have lost out there on the marks because that, to me, is signifying that it's dairy. So you could have almond milk, rice milk, coconut milk, soya milk, any old milk there will do. Um, so this is what it would look like for be vegan breakfast. So you need to be able to do this for all of the special diets. It came up as part of a question this year. It's highly likely that it will come up again next year. So foods which are suitable for a lacto-vegetarian diet. So remembering back to the word lacto, which comes from the word lactose, which means the sugar which is naturally present in dairy products such as milk, yogurt and cheese. So you're looking at someone who can have milk, dairy products, even though they are a vegetarian. So they may eat all the same foods as a vegetarian and so plus your dairy products, okay? So you're thinking of animal milk yogurt, cheese, ice cream, cream, eggs and custard. So these are the types of things you're thinking of and you need to be able to distinguish between lacto-vegetarianism, vegetarianism and veganism. Here is a question from the 2022 junior cycle exam, which I would have corrected as an examiner. This question was answered very well and it was worth a total of six marks. So what I would always say to my students is to highlight the key information which can be found in the question. So what information does this symbol shown given? give to the consumer so I would highlight information symbol shown on the right hand side we can see a v and we can see a little leaf so this question was a part of a longer question um, and it was about a sit two cereal bars and you had to analyze the nutritional content the value of it in the diet and then there was a picture of two cereal bars and one was celiac and one was for vegans 
or also suitable for vegetarians. So you could say, for example, the product is suitable for vegans, or you could say the product is suitable for vegans and vegetarians. You could also say that people, uh, it is suitable for people who not do not eat or consume any animal products at all. And then you will get full marks. But overall, it was a very good answered question. Here is um, the NCCA 2021 sample paper. So it says here, the vegan symbol is displayed on both products. Explain the term vegan. So I would highlight explain, which means I'm going to need to write a full sentence and a lot of information. And then vegan is the other thing I'm going to highlight. And if I look over to the right, I see that there is a circle with vegan in it and two little um, leaves. So what I would do is I would say that vegans are very strict vegetarians. So vegans do not consume or eat any animal products for such as the likes of milk, eggs and meat. So it's always very important to go back over exam questions after you have studied a topic so that you can kind of quiz yourself and see what you do and don't know and then go back over it again if you get it wrong. Here is the second part of this question, also from the NCCA 2021 sample paper for Junior Cycle Home Economics. So part two, identify two other foods suitable for a vegan. So the key word there, my action verb is identify. So I know that this is usually a short question verb and that it is going to be quick and simple answers. I know that I have to give two answers because it says one and two and it's giving me space for two and I'm looking at foods which are suitable for a vegan. So I'm going to start thinking about what is a vegan? Well they do not consume any meat or dairy products so I'm going to include a dish which doesn't contain that either of those. So for example I could have vegan lasagna made with um, egg-free lasagna sheets and dairy-free cheese. I could also have vegetable soup. Now, vegetable soup is suited to nearly every uh, special diet. The only one you'd have to be careful of is celiac, just to make sure that your stock cube is uh, gluten-free. But there are countless ideas. You could put down a salad. You could put down um, a pasta dish made with um, tofu or corn or made with just like... Uh, vegetables so a vegetable stir fry there's countless ideas there you also have many desserts so all desserts most of them would be suitable for vegans you can make a vegan brownie you can make vegan ice cream where you're using for example almond milk instead of your cream so here is another ncca 2021 sample paper so in this one, it says, explain how you might modify the pizza to make it suitable for a vegan or celiac. So in this case, um, they didn't give you a picture or a description of what was in the pizza. You just had to come up with it. So what I would be doing is highlighting the key bits pertaining to the answer. So the bit I'd be highlighting would be explain, which is my action verb, usually from a long question. So I know I have to give full sentences and a lot of detail it says modify the pizza i'm going to highlight that modify means to change something i know that i'm talking about pizza now which is important and i can choose vegan or celiac so for the case of today's uh, session we will be looking at vegan so therefore i will highlight vegan but if you did answer the question and you did a full description of a vegan pizza and a, or and a celiac pizza you'd then be marked out with whichever one you got full marks for um, so, um, a sample answer here that I have written is, I would use vegan cheese instead of dairy cheese, which contains no animal products, okay? So, you don't want any dairy cheese. I would ensure that there was no meat on the pizza, and instead, I would opt for plenty of vegetables. So, you're thinking of pepper, sweet corn, olives, mushroom, any, any vegetables you can write there. But you have to make sure that it says there's no meat and no fish, um... Not that you don't want fish on a pizza, but you just need to make sure that you're being explicit. So there is a sample there. Answer.
this question here is from the State Examinations Commission's 2020 sample paper. Um, and this is part of the short questions. So it says here, pasta dishes full of vegetables can be a healthy family meal. So we have roasted vegetable pasta and we have a picture there. We know that it's from safefood.eu. Ingredients are 20 mils of vegetable oil, one red onion, one red pepper, one yellow pepper, 100 grams of chickpeas, two cloves of garlic, 400 gram tin of tomatoes, 100 grams of grated vegetarian cheese, that'd be important, 200 grams of penne pasta. So part B, name one other special diet that the roasted vegetable pasta dish would suit. Give a reason for your answer. It says then underneath you've space and it says name of special diet and reason. So what I will be doing here, I'll be highlighting that it says name and special diet. And then you have to say, give a reason. So giving a reason means I'm giving full sentences. So because um, we are looking at vegetarianism and veganism and lacto-vegetarianism lacto -vegan in this Saturday session, I'm going to go with one of those. So I can look by at the ingredients. I can see that there are no animal products, especially because it says vegetarian cheese, which means it's also suitable for vegans because it is not made from um, dairy products. And um, there's no meat at all, all vegetables. So I would say vegetarianism, and I would say this dish would suit a vegetarian, or you could say slash lacto-vegetarian or slash vegan, as there are no animal products such as meat. There are many vegetables, including tomatoes, peppers, and chickpeas. And you could also write down the fact that it says 100 grams of grated vegetarian cheese really, really does concrete this answer for suiting someone on a vegetarian or vegan diet, okay? Um, and yeah, this would be the type of question that will come up. Um, so it is actually a very nice question. You just have to read all the information which is there. So we have looked at vegetarian vegan diets. Now vegetarian and vegan diets are the most one of the most popular special diets along with celiac disease to come up in the past paper, which was this year, 2022, in sample papers provided by the NCCA and by the SEC, and then in the exam paper books as well. Next up, we're going to look at eating disorders, which is a sensitive topic, um, but it is a very important topic. It is also a topic which is dealt in SPHE the social per pe personal health education. Now, whilst SPHE isn't actually a state exam, it is a subject that you will learn about this as well. So it's a subject which showing that it, it does link in. So home ec links in with loads of other subjects. So in eating disorders, our learning intentions will include defining eating disorders, listing the two most common types. We will be able to distinguish, so tell the difference between anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. We we'll look at eating disorders and COVID-19 as it is very topical at the moment and we will be able to know the supports which are available. So again, I'm going to highlight this is a sensitive topic. So again, I would get my students to think about what they know beforehand. I would remind them that it is a sensitive topic and we must be careful of the language and terminology in which we use to explain stuff. So I get students to write down what they know about it, um, say in blue pen, and then at the end of the chapter, they go back and write down more stuff in red pen and allows them to see what they know, at, what, what they know and what they have learned throughout the chapter. So I give you a minute to write stuff down. Okay, so what is an eating disorder? We're looking at defining it. So an eating disorder is a range of psychological disorders which are characterized by abnormal or disturbed eating habits. So this will be from the World Health Organization, so the WHO website. It is important, very important actually, to note that just because a person has an eating disorder does not mean they are doing it on purpose, okay? It is a disease just like all of the other special diet conditions. 
so they are not doing it on purpose. There is an estimated 188,895 people in Ireland who will experience an eating disorder at some point in their lives. Now, this was a survey um, carried out by the HSC um, in 2018. Um, there's a good chance that this has increased um, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic as people did not have access to as many supports. So from this slide, you need to be able to explain what an eating disorder is, okay, and know that it is a special diet condition. You will not be expecting an exam scenario to um, tell the examiner how many people in Ireland will experience, you just need to be able to define it using full sentences as well. So there are two most common types of eating disorders. There are many more, but for the junior cycle home ec, um, specification, we only need to know the two most common. So in Ireland, they are anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. So you need to be able to distinguish or tell the difference between the two of them. So anorexia nervosa. So this is a condition where the sufferer refuses to eat enough to maintain a healthy weight. So it means that they experience an intense fear of gaining weight. So the idea of eating makes them feel really, really anxious and frightened and they are afraid of putting on the weight. So it affects males and females. It's not just one sex. It affects people of all ages, not just teenagers. It can affect anyone, okay? But studies have shown that it is more prevalent or more common amongst girls and young women, okay? And this, they say, is due to the fact that bodies are changing at that time of the life. So anorexics um, may see themselves as fat, even though they may be very much underweight. So we're thinking back to our BMI, so our Basal Metabolic Index, and this is all found in the healthy eating chapters under strand one, and you'll be thinking back to the food pyramid. So anorexia nervosa requires professional treatment because if it is not treated, it could, in severe cases, do result in death due to starvation. And it's important to take note of that. The HSE website discusses how there is a compulsive element to the person's behaviours and their thinking. So what that means is that they feel as if they have to do what the anorexia side of their heads is telling them to do. Okay, so they have no choice. So there's a little voice inside their head, which we all have. But in this case, the person's voice inside their head is telling them what they have to do and they have absolutely no choice in the matter. This is why they require professional treatment. So people describe it as a battle within their minds, okay? So it's their eating disorder voice. And this is why it can be really helpful to start to think of an eating disorder as an it. So there's a lot of information in this slide and with my students, I would get them to break down the information and put it um, into maybe a graphical organizer or a mind map and be able to state and explain and give examples. Um, but it's really important again to take note that this is a sensitive issue. So bulimia nervosa, you need to be able to tell the difference or distinguish between anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. So bulimia nervosa is known as binge eating. So you're thinking B for binge, B for bulimia. So it is often associated with anorexia nervosa, but it is actually a different type of eating disorder. So bulimia nervosa is also known as, a person who has bulimia nervosa is known as a bulimic, okay? So bulimics may have a time when they are able to control their eating and they then all of a sudden they lose control so they can be think look like they're absolutely fine think they're absolutely fine and then something triggers and then all of a sudden um, they lose the control again so they eat a lot of food and often feel really guilty about it and therefore they will physically make themselves sick um professional help again is required to treat this condition and GPs can offer a lot of supports and give um, help and offer um, yeah, loads of support. So you should always go to your GP.
Um, so what it means um, to be bulimic, so it means that uh, when a person has bulimia like anorexia, they are driven by an intense fear of gaining weight. So what they do is they engage in and become trapped within a cycle of restriction, binging and purging. In many cases, bulimia begins with a diet, okay, but their preoccupation with food and weight becomes obsessive, okay, so they're constantly counting the calories and then it can take over their life. So eventually what happens is they will become locked into a compulsive cycle of binging and purging. So this means the getting rid of food or the vomiting, okay, which resorts to other ways of preventing weight gain. So they may eat food and be eating in the canteen and eating at home. And then afterwards, then um, this urge comes and they get really, really anxious about the weight and then they um, purge. So attempts to break the cycle often fail and the person begins to feel more and more out of control. So all of the information here, I would have researched and got it from the HSC website. So again, it's really important that you, when you're talking about this in an exam scenario, that you're really careful with the use of terminology or the words that you're using. So with bulimia nervosa on the outside, a person with bulimia will look and seem very capable. They will be positive, successful and on top of things. However, on the inside, they may be struggling desperately with feelings of guilt, shame, self-loathing and ineffectiveness. So it's basically like a mask. So many people with bulimia they maintain a normal body weight, okay? As a result, the disorder can sometimes go unnoticed and untreated for a long time. So the longer the binge purge cycle remains in place, the harder it becomes to overcome it. And it does cause um, problems then later on in life because if you're not getting enough nutrients into the body, you're not getting enough calcium or vitamin D, you could end up getting the likes of osteoporosis later in life. And there's a whole host of other uh, co-conditions which can occur along with it. So COVID-19 has caused an increase in eating disorders in Ireland and across the world. So there are online support groups available which were particularly important during COVID. So there was a 110% increase between March and November of 2020. So 2020 would have been when the COVID pandemic uh, first started. Um, helplines, they've noted a 48% increase between, again, April, October 2020. Email support, there's nearly 1,500 emails. So that's an 18% increase. And then the Piler program in 2020 had an increase of 98%. So 611 family members were supported because eating disorders don't just affect the individual. They also affect family members and loved ones and friends. So these are Irish statistics. And while you will not have to be able to list all these numbers off in the exam it is important to note that it is on the increase not just you know to know for exams but to know you know there are people in your community who could possibly be suffering from eating disorder so supports that are available these are for ireland so there is a helpline there and there's a phone number there are support groups there is the body wise connect now this is only for individuals who are 19 and over there's youth connect so 13 to 18 years old so that's specifically targeting teenagers there are email supports and then there is the free pillar program for families so there are a wide range of supports available there's also if you go onto the hsc website there's more information and then your GP will also have a lot of information as well specifically um, for families and the individual which has the um, eating disorder. So the topic we just covered was eating disorders we looked at bulimia nervosa and anorexia nervosa. Up to now there have been no um, sample papers or exam paper questions 
to do with eating disorders. It is because it is a sensitive topic. It has come up in the old curriculum and it is important to know about it. So for today's session, we will not be going into the exam questions for eating disorders as none have come up as of the moment. But you will need to be able to distinguish or give information to tell the difference between the two. So bulimia and anorexia nervosa. So we looked at vegetarian and vegan diets, then eating disorders, and now we're going to look at food allergies and intolerances. And that will then finish off all of the chapters which are found in the special diet series. So this is part this is part three of a three session series on special diets and uh, special diets one and two can be found on um, the exam revision channel on YouTube and they aired um, earlier on in the year. So food allergies and intolerances. So our learning intentions include defining food allergy, giving examples of food allergies, defining food intolerance, giving examples of food intolerances, knowing the difference between food intolerance and food allergy symptoms. So again, I would ask my students to write down what they know about food intolerances or allergies. So you could do this digitally or you could write it down your write it down on a piece of paper. I get them to do it in one color, for example, blue, and then go back and write it in another color so that they can at the end of the chapter come back to it and see how much information they have learned. Food allergy. So to be able to define a food allergy, a food allergy is an abnormal, exaggerated reaction of the immune system to certain foods. So our immune system is what protects us from viruses and uh, bacterial infections. So anything foreign that is invading the body, the immune system is the first or the second line of defense. OK, so it is what is going to attack stuff. OK, Um. For some people, when they eat food, their body, body kind of overreacts and thinks that it is something bad like a virus or a bacteria entering the body and it attacks it and therefore it is actually causing damage and reactions to the body. So when someone has a food allergy, their immune system sees the food as hostile, okay? And the body's defense mechanism springs into action. So it can range from... A variety of symptoms which can be different from person to person so a person could be severely allergic to one thing and not to another or could just have mild symptoms okay so symptoms can go from mild itching to severe breathing difficulties or even shock which can lead to anaphylaxis which is life-threatening a person with a food allergy will have to carry an EpiPen and if a person uh, goes into anaphylaxis, which means their lips swell up and they can't breathe, they will have to use their EpiPen and you call um, 112 and you bring them and an ambulance will come. So the symptoms usually happen immediately after eating the food. So that's really important to note. Food allergy is immediate, okay? Whereas a food intolerance takes time. So allergens, these are foods which cause an allergic reaction. Most people will actually recognize these from being in cafes and restaurants. There's a good chance you do know someone who has a food allergy or intolerance. So the ones in that are listed in Ireland are cereals containing gluten, crustaceans, so the likes of your prawns and crabs, your eggs, which is very common, fish, peanuts, which is a very common one, soya beans, um, so soya beans are found in a lot of products. They're found in bread. They're, um, you can have, so a person that's allergic to soya beans isn't necessarily always allergic to soya milk. It can depend on the severity of the reaction. So some people who are allergic to soya milk can actually um, tolerate soya beans. Um, your milk is very common as well, and that's usually because of lactose. Um, nuts, so there's all different types of nuts. They may be allergic to peanuts and not other types of nuts. Pine nuts would be a very uh, popular food allergen. Um, celery, mustard seeds, sesame seeds, and lupin. And then again, we have our mollusks and our sulfur dioxide and sulfites. So these are used to preserve food or make it last longer. So again, this relating then to uh, your food preservation chapter.
which you can find more information about that in the exam revision websites in the home ex section under strand one. So these are the 14 allergens. You will need to know and um, be able to list some allergens, okay? Um, and they are always found on food menus. You may see them on the counter um, on like a, a list like this. And it's so that anyone who has an allergy or intolerance is able to check what is in the food. So all allergens must be declared. Allergens are regulated by the FSAI, so the Food Safety Authority of Ireland, and they have a website, fsai.ie, and then they have an advice line, okay? And they list all the stuff there. They also have very detailed information on their website, so they have like PDFs and infographics which really help people. So this is what the logo looks like, the FSAI. You do need to know what the FSAI logo looks like, okay? So we have, kind of looks like uh, mountains um, and you do need to know what that is and you need to know what the FSAI does and you'll learn about that in more detail on the consumer chapters. The FSAI will regularly update consumers and post on their social media website social media platforms um, mainly on Facebook but also on their website and if something is recalled or they're due to an allergen not being disclosed they will um, list it. Um, very regularly occurs where a food is being imported from another country a non-English speaking country and it hasn't been declared then because you can't read it um, and it can be very serious for people with food allergies and intolerances. So food intolerance does not usually involve the immune system. So that's important to take note. Allergy does, intolerance does not. An allergy is instant, whereas symptoms for an intolerance take longer to develop and they're generally not life-threatening. So you more than likely will not go into anaphylaxis. So your lips won't swell up and you more than likely won't stop breathing okay it can affect your long-term health so there it is still serious enough examples of food intolerances include lactose intolerance so this is where you can't digest um the sugar lactose which is found in dairy products like milk cheese yogurt ice cream and cream and custard celiac disease which means that you cannot digest gluten and um, which is a protein found in wheat so there you'd have to have gluten-free products like gluten-free bread. What happens is it um, affects the absorption of nutrients. So it's affecting the villi in your uh, intestine. It means you are going to be lacking in nutrients. Um, monosodium glutamate, so MSG, this is what's found in Chinese food. That's what kind of makes you, so for example, um, sweet and sour. That's what makes you want to go back and have more of it because it tastes so good. Pringles are absolutely coated in MSG. Caffeine can cause intolerance. So they are the four that you will need to know. So symptoms of a food allergy include anaphylaxis. So this is where your lips and throat swell up and you can't breathe. A rash, swelling of face or lips or eyes, which can just stop at that point and not lead to not being able to breathe or it can progress to full on anaphylaxis. With a food allergy, you're going to need to carry an EpiPen. Um, with a food intolerance, you're going to get symptoms like diarrhea, bloating, an upset stomach and weight loss because you're not absorbing your nutrients and you're going to be tired. Now, whilst um, food intolerance symptoms aren't life-threatening, they are still life-altering. So they are going to affect a person's life. You need to be able to distinguish or tell the difference between the two. So in today's Saturday session we looked at vegetarian and vegan diets we then looked at eating disorders which is a sensitive topic we then looked at food allergies and intolerances and again with food allergies and intolerances as of yet there hasn't been any exam questions in the sample papers or in this year's 2022 exam which could mean that it's going to come up this year but we can never guarantee anything Check out our exam revision website at examrevision.ie where there's a junior cycle home economics page. We have um, a variety of video tutorials. We have PowerPoint presentations. The tutorials involve me going through the presentations. We have self-correcting quizzes. You have an exam builder. We have resource packs and we have a student progress tracker. 
The exam revision section for home ec is divided into three key areas, so our three strands. Strand one, food, health, culinary skills, which is where today's topic came from. We have strand two, responsible family living, and we have strand three, textiles and craft. And this is what, for example, um, it looks like when you go into a special diet. So if you were going to look at obesity and dental disease, you would have the video, the PowerPoint presentation, the quiz. Okay, you could build your own exam. Make sure to follow us on social media. So Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and our YouTube channel. Thank you um, for coming and watching this session with Amy on special diets. Please check out our YouTube channel for um, previous videos and there are more to come. Thank you for listening.